We're talking some key storylines to keep an eye on for week six next on Fantasy Football Today in five. Welcome to FFT in five. I'm Chris Towers. I'm here with Dan Schneier. We're talking about some key storylines to watch for week six. But first, Dan, hit me with some beat the waiver wire targets. And one I want to want to mention before we start, uh, before you give me yours, I guess. Cam Akers is 71 percent rostered. That's pretty high. But if you're he's out there in any of your leagues, I do just want to continue pointing out that like the Vikings have talked about or we've gotten reports that the Vikings want to use a, a hot hand approach at running back in the last couple of weeks. It's been Alexander Madison. He's he's held serve. You know, he hasn't lost the job, had another bad drop last week on, on a play that could have been a touchdown, has had fumble issues this season. I, I still think there's a decent chance that at some point this season, Cam Akers is going to be the lead back for the Vikings. So that's one to keep an eye on. And Dan, do you have any other ones? Yeah, a few I'm going to go over. I'll start with Dalton Kincaid, rookie tight end, first round pick on the Bills. I've seen him dropped a lot lately. I talked with somebody who covers the Bills and does X's and O's in film review, and he's close. He's closer than people realize to actually realizing a role that will help the Bills and help your fantasy teams. Uh I don't know if it's going to happen this week because he's a little injured, but just keep an eye on that because he's someone who I think can help you down the line. We've seen what Sam Laporte has been able to do as a rookie, so don't just say, oh, he's a rookie, he can't help. Uh, I also would say stash Kyler Murray. I know there hasn't been much reports on this yet, but this probably the reason you can stash him right now if you're in a two qb league super flex or even struggling at one qb this is a big guy you want on your bench because cardinals have shown they get are a more competent offense than people expected them to be this year he already has a rapport built in with marquise brown once he comes back the o-line's playing a lot better than people realize or expected last guy i want to throw out there chris a running back tank bigsby my boy out of auburn love this tape um it's not there yet the role and travis Etienne is coming off the best game of the season but ETN has dealt with injuries in the past, or at least one big injury. And he's the type of guy who I think if ETN goes down, would be one of the few guys who gets a workhorse role there. Yes, they might mix in uh, a few other backs, but he would be the primary guy there. So those are my three beat the waiver wire stashes. All right, let's talk about some storylines that we're going to be keeping an eye on. I think one of the big ones is just what does this Indianapolis offense look like with Gardner Minshew taking over full time? Obviously, we saw him play one game, decent amount of pass volume. This is a team that... I think is going to continue to play fast. They've been one of the fastest paced teams in the NFL. I don't think that's going to change. I think there's going to be a lot of running, but you know, does Gardner Minshew taking over at QB for at least the next four weeks? Does that open a path for Michael Pittman and Josh Downs to be, you know, starting caliber fantasy options or in Michael Pittman's case, you know, a must start guy. Josh Downs, that's who I'm looking at. You look Mm -hmm. at the numbers. Jacob Gibbs did a good job of breaking this down lately. Uh, Josh Downs, I think since week two, has more receiving yards than Michael Pittman. And that's only going to grow because Gardner Minshew worked a lot with Josh Downs this offseason. Second team offense. Josh Downs started there. They built a rapport. It's obvious so far that that rapport is carrying over. I think it's going to be even more obvious after this week. So he should have been in my beat the waiver wire type of area because yes, some people picked him up in deeper leagues, but he's available widely in most mm-hmm. leagues right now. So keep an eye on Josh Downs, credibly talented rookie out of UNC, really good at the layup, right? Uh, layup throws. And that's something Gardner Minshew is able to do. And also Gardner Minshew, the one thing about him, like I'm not as big on Gardner Minshew as some people. I know he thinks he's hey. amazing. Yeah. He thinks he's amazing, but One thing I will give him credit for, he throws with anticipation better than most quarterbacks, even starting quarterbacks. He does a lot of other things I think are bad at quarterback, and I don't think he's a starting caliber quarterback, but that anticipatory throwing is going to work with Josh Downs' style of play at wide receiver and his ability to get open early in the routes on those two-way goes from the slot. All right, one of the other storylines I want to keep an eye on is just Joe Burrow. You know, we we saw, you know, maybe the worst four-game stretch of his career to open this season. But coming out of week four, he did say that it was the best he had felt after a game so far. And then in week five, he comes out and the stat line, at least, was relatively vintage Joe Burrow. I I will point out, you know, there was a lot of, okay, Joe Burrow's back. He was one for four on passes that were 15 or more yards down the field. They ran, I think, 78 plays in that game. He had 46 dropbacks, something like that. So the yards per attempt were actually pretty poor even without accounting for the fact that 63 of those 307 or whatever yards it was came on a single throw. So I I just, I'm starting Joe Burrow. He's a top 12 quarterback for me this week. I would like some confirmation that he's back. I, I don't know if you feel the same way, if you have any skepticism there. I do. And I have skepticism, skepticism because one T Higgins said today, yeah, I'm going to try to play through this, but this thing's going to be with me all year. This yeah, injury. That's not good for him. Two, 
I watched the film of that game for beyond the box score, and he still is not under center at all, Joe Burrow. So that's half the playbook. There was a portion of the playbook that's just completely taken out. That can't be good for an offense. And three, everyone, and I mean everyone, has beaten up on this Arizona Cardinals pass defense. Yeah. Daniel Jones, Daniel <laughs> freaking Jones, threw for 300-plus yards and tore them up in the second half. That should give you an idea, and it's not just him. It's literally everyone but, I think, Dak Prescott, who's had a really good game against Arizona. So I am skeptical for those reasons. And the last one is just, can the Patriots give us any reason to be hopeful? <laughs> this looks like they're, they're yeah. dead last in scoring. They, I think they have three points over the past two games. They've benched their quarterback each of the past two games, and then all the reports this week were, we're sticking with Mac Jones, but... <laughs> And look, they've got a great matchup against the Raiders. The Raiders defense is is not good. Can they give us any reason? I mean, I, I don't think we're going to want any of the pass catchers in this offense anyway, but can they at least give us some reason to think that Ramondre Stevenson might have some value moving forward? Jacob Gibbs is high on Stevenson this week, and he made a great case for it in Beyond the Box Score, the article you can find over on Sportsline. Check that out. Sportsline's an amazing source for you guys to get information for, on gambling and fantasy now that Gibbs is running stuff there. I thought the case was good, but I also need to see it first. Yeah. I think the biggest issue of the Patriots, ever since losing Dante Scarnecchia, the best offensive line coach maybe ever, this offensive line has just not looked the same. At mm -hmm. first, it looked okay. And it looked like, okay, maybe this won't matter. And now it looks like it matters. And so I think it all starts with the offensive line in football, then the quarterback. And so right now, I think those two are big question marks. All right, that's going to do it for Fantasy Football Today in 5. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more uh, start sit questions and the latest injury updates for Sunday morning. We'll see you then.